today we are going to talk about how we can consume uh, SharePoint Online data when developing uh, adaptive card extensions. And whenever uh, we want to do that, we need to keep into account that at the very end, uh, adaptive card extensions are just uh, yet another kind or yet another flavor of uh, SPFX components. So uh, in SPFX and in ACES as well, we can easily use the HTTP client, the SP HTTP client, and the AAD HTTP client in order to consume uh, SharePoint data depending on what we want to do. As well as we can also rely on PMPJS, which generally speaking is my favorite choice uh, whenever we want to consume uh, uh, SharePoint data. And then once we uh, have the data retrieved from SharePoint, we can easily do data binding uh, using uh, the data binding techniques uh, that we have uh, in uh, adaptive card extensions uh, and in the adaptive card uh, syntax, as we already saw uh, a couple of weeks ago in the SIG call of the 27th of January, if you want to there as well to have a look at how we can do uh, data binding in ACES. So let me switch uh, to my uh, demo environment and let me show you uh, what we can do. Here we have uh, a, a list just for the sake of making an example. It is a list in Microsoft lists, but it is actually also a SharePoint list as we know because behind the scenes of Microsoft list there is still uh, uh, Microsoft SharePoint online. And what I want to show you now is how we can consume the list of items that we have in the is issue tracker list from uh, an adaptive card extension, either using native uh, SharePoint uh, uh, support in SPFX or using uh, uh, PMPJS. So uh, the very first example will be this adaptive card in which we can easily see the list of items that we have uh, in this issue tracker list. And we simply uh, retrieve the ID and the title of every single item for the sake of simplicity. So let me show you how you can do that. Well, in my adaptive card extension built with SPFX, I simply configured in the state uh, definition of my uh, component uh, a property called items of type uh, array of item, where every single iList item is just made of an ID and of a title. And then in the properties of my uh, component, I have a target list property, which is a string. Well, inside my uh, component inside my adaptive card extension in the on init method, I can easily rely on a load SPO data function that I defined. And just to avoid blocking the UI and the uh, rendering of my uh, component, I will simply uh, slightly delay by half a second the execution of this method so that I can keep on uh, loading and rendering the whole component before doing the actual uh, uh, data retrieval from uh, uh, SharePoint Online. And then in the load SPO data method, I simply use the context of SPFX because again, an adaptive card extension is nothing more than SPFX component. So this dot context is available like always in SPFX and dot SP HTTP client, I can use this object to make an actual get request to get, for example, the list of items in a target list configured as the target list title in my uh, ACE. In fact, if I go to edit this item and I click on the pencil, we can see that here we have the target list title, which is just issue tracker. That is the name of my target list. So by doing that, we can provide the uh, REST API request to get all of the items of my target list uh, retrieved by title. And then I can simply get the JSON response and I will have to manually map the result of my uh, query into an actual array of items that I want to store inside my items property in the state of the adaptive card uh, extension component. Once I've done that, uh, for example, in the card view, I can simply say that in the uh, text uh, in the description, sorry, property of my uh, card view, uh, I want to say that there are length of the array items in my state items in the target list. And I can give this kind of user experience. And then I can, in the uh, quick view, 
provide as the content of the My Quick View data, the array of list items, which is exported by uh, the other uh, class, uh, by the other uh, TS file, sorry. And I can provide the items that I have in the state object of my component as the data source for my data binding. And as such, as we already uh, saw also in the previous C call, we can do the binding and we can go through all of the items in the data source of my adaptive card, and we can simply get the ID and the title of every single item. So this is a very simple example to explain you what you can do uh, starting from the basics uh, in order to consume SharePoint online data. But as we just saw here, we have to do quite some work to uh, build the URL of the API request, uh, to do the actual uh, uh, realization of the JSON and to uh, map the JSON response uh, into the actual array of items. So let me stop this solution let me switch to another one that i want to share with you so first of all i will do gulp serve no browser here so that i can show you uh, the uh, ad this adaptive card in action and then i'm going to show you the actual implementation so again we have uh, an adaptive card extension here in the adaptive card extension almost with the same uh, logic as before in the state uh, type definition we have uh, still uh, a, a and a couple of properties of type array, where uh, this time I defined a fully typed issue type that I'm importing from this TS file, where I have the title, the priority, and the status of every single uh, issue in my issue tracker list. Then I have the old issues and the new issues in my state, as well as uh, I have the issue list title property in the properties of my component. So like before, we start uh, in the onInit uh, method, uh, we uh, set up with PMPJS uh, the context. So using the SP object that we have in PMPJS, which is a, a package that you will have to import in your solution, we simply set up PMPJS to work with the context of SharePoint framework in our component. And then again, with a set timeout of a half second, we will load all of the issues. In order to load the issues, we rely on a service that I defined. The service is called issue service. And here you can see we have an instance pre-created inside this uh, uh, TS file. And the issue service will simply provide a get issues and get issues by status method. The first one will simply give me back the uh, list, actually an array of issues based on the name of the list. And the other one will also filter the issues by status. So here you can see the implementation of the methods and I can use the fluent API of PMPJS. So I can say sp.web.lists. I will get my list by title and PMPJS will build the actual uh, REST query for me. I want to select these properties of every single item and I want to get all of the items. Of course, here I have just a small amount of items so I can do that. Otherwise you could do paging and stuff like that. And once I've got my list of SPO issue items, which is defined as an interface right here, I can map them to the actual output that I want uh, as the uh, data binding source for my solution. And the same applies for the get issues by status, but here I'm going to use a camel query to filter the items. So here you can see again sp.web.list. So through PMPJS, I'm getting the target list reference, and then I make a query with camel. Here you can see the, the actual camel, and this is the uh, readable version of the camel that I'm running. So I'm retrieving these fields, and I'm making a query based on the status, uh, filtering uh, uh, based on the status value that I get as an input argument. And then again, I do the filtering. Cool. So now in my load issues, I can get through my service the uh, two sets of issues, the old issues and the uh, new issues, and I can again do the binding, setting them into the state. Moreover, I can also keep an eye on the on property pane field change method so that in case the uh, title list will change, I will be able to update the list of items. So now it is running. Let me go to edit and let me remove this item. And I will briefly add the new one just to show you the output. So here we are consume SPO ACE. Here I can go here and say that the list is issue tracker. Thanks, SharePoint, for helping me. And now we have our um, adaptive card extension with the card view rendering the number of new issues that I have, which is actually the number of items with new right here. 
and then we can see all of the issues with the status and with the priority. So really easy and simple. And again, here we are just doing the data binding using the capabilities of adaptive card uh, syntax. And here we bind all of the issues in this view and getting the status or the title or the priority of every single issue. So really simple and quick, but really powerful. And I think that's all for me as well. So back to you, Patrick, and thank you. Thank you, Paolo, for that. That's another great example of data binding for your ACEs. Really fits into a lot of what we've been talking about in the other calls about making dynamic adaptive card extensions and pulling data from different sources. So great to see that. Thank you, Paolo.